Welcome to Laurel Community Spotlight. I'm Communications Director Audrey Barnes. Summertime, time for outdoor activities and fun in the sun. Unfortunately, it's also a time of increased attention to our physiques. Let's face it, getting into a swimsuit is not something that all of us enjoy. But proper nutrition and focusing on the things we put on our plates and into our mouths can make a huge difference. Joining us today to talk about that is registered dietitian Dana McGee. She's from Rebecca Bitzer and Associates in Columbia and Greenbelt. Dana, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. This is a huge topic and very timely. Summer, it's all hot, less clothing, more skin. Of course, we all want to look good, but... You know, being healthy is a lot more than just how much we weigh, isn't it? Oh, definitely. I, I definitely think that weight is a part of it. You know, you should feel good in your skin, but you should feel good at whatever weight you are. It doesn't have to be 100 pounds from now, 50 pounds from now, or 10 pounds from now. And I think living in the skin that we're in helps encourage that healthy, active lifestyle. So we really take the focus off of weight a little bit, really focus on some of those lifestyle factors, getting rid of these medications, limiting how many times you're visiting the doctor, and really making sure that you're not at risk for some of these diseases. That's our main concern and our main goal. Weight is a side effect of that healthy eating most of the time. So you're a dietitian as opposed to a nutritionist. Mm -hmm. A lot of people confuse the two. What, sure. What's the difference? Sure. This is a question I get a lot. And anyone can really call themselves a nutritionist, which is a little scary for us, a little scary for the public, because you don't need a degree. You can work at a health food store. It's your first day on your job, you can call yourself a nutritionist. But a dietitian um, has very specific training. You have to have a major in either dietetics, food and nutrition, or your master's degree in food and nutrition. You also have to do a internship. This can last nine months to a year where you're doing a certain amount of hours, hundreds of hours of clinical food service experience and also community experience. So after that, you take an exam. Um, after you sit for the exam and pass the exam, you have to do continuing education until the end of your career. So it's really very regimented. Um, you have to do a lot of upkeep in terms of the education as things are changing. You need to be up to speed with that and maintain that credential. So you're working at Rebecca Bitzer and Associates, and that's a huge practice here in the Laurel area. Tell us about exactly. that group and your approach to diet and fitness. Sure, definitely. So we are a group of seven registered dietitians, which is really unheard of in this area. Um, so we see clients from all over, D.C. metro area, um, Maryland, Virginia, um, even through Skype, that type of thing. So um, we really are a very large practice of nutrition, and our main belief is that our dietitians are specialized. So each of our dietitians has a specific um, group of people that they work with, which means all their continuing education goes towards that focus. So they are really the experts in that field. Um, we have um, experts on diabetes, cholesterol, uh, heart health, um, sports nutrition, eating disorders, weight loss, pediatric nutrition, PCOS, um, you name it, we have a dietitian that really specializes and focuses in that. So you're not coming into your appointment and they're looking something up online, trying to figure out something. Um, so it's really, it's really good for our clients and it's good for our dietitians too. One thing that really caught my attention as I was researching your group is the Rebel Diet Programs yes. that you've come up with. Yes. That sounds very interesting. Tell me about that. Sure. So the name kind of comes from our frustration with all of the fad diets that are out there. Uh, we see clients after clients coming in with a background in Weight Watchers and Jenny Craig, and they're seeing me because those things didn't work in the long term for them. Not to say that those things didn't help them learn about nutrition. They come to us knowing a lot about what calories are, what carbs are, how to balance their plate. But it's really how can that fit into their everyday lifestyle when they go on vacation, when they're eating at a friend's house, when they're out to eat and the portion sizes are out of this world. Um, so it's really how we can work with the knowledge they know and really fit it into their lifestyle. Um, we really take the focus off of weight, as we talked about before, uh, really making sure that they're not at risk for certain things, that they're eating things that are going to fuel their body well so that they feel well and they feel good. Um, and that's our main concern. 
Do you do it in an individual way? Because not everybody's into big group sessions sure. where you have to kind of like stand up and confess your, your food sins yeah. in front of a, the, a room full of people. Definitely. So we definitely take the individual approach, um, not to say that kids and their parents can't be seen together or couples or, um, you know, friends or something like that. But really it is mainly individual. We do offer groups and classes for the people that do thrive in that situation. But for the majority of my work is individual one-on-one -on -one counseling. So, okay, so let's talk about some of the diet myths. Yeah. A lot of people think that you have to, you know, just eat a lot less food, and then that's the key to getting skinny. Sure. What do you think about that? Sure. So um, a lot of people that are into these diets um, kind of focus on that all or nothing. They're either all on the wagon or all off the wagon. Um, and that could be a, a calorie or a diet with maybe 1,200 calories, 1,300 calories, something that's probably very low for the majority of the population. Um, and what happens with that is it's very difficult difficult to maintain um, and it's not so much fun either. You're hungry all the time, you'll have cravings and then you feel guilty if you give in to those cravings or if you eat more than you were supposed to eat on that diet. Um, so it's really not maintainable. Also if we under eat, our body can store food and it can start going into what we call starvation mode. It's kind of our caveman instincts, you know. If we were um, out for a long period of time without food, our body learned to conserve our energy and to slow our metabolism and we don't want to mess with our metabolism. We focus on getting that metabolism revved up and going. So we really don't want to decrease that, which can happen in as little as 24 to 48 hours of too little food um, can slow that metabolism. I have girlfriends and I, and I must confess I'm guilty of it too, especially when I'm in, you know, warrior diet mode, mm -hmm. is that if I'm not hungry, if I don't hear my stomach growling and, and if I'm not just miserable, then I know I'm not going to lose weight. But mm -hmm. that's, that's totally wrong, I imagine. Right, right. So, I mean, who wants to be miserable? The, the big part of nutrition is that it can make us feel well. When you're eating right and you're eating healthfully, maybe 80% of the time. It doesn't have to be 100% of the time, but you're going to feel a lot different. Your energy is going to be different. Um, your memory, your concentration, all of those things are going to be a lot better when you're fueling properly. So you don't have to be starving. Starving doesn't mean you're losing weight. Um, it just means that maybe you're not having enough. And that's a, lot, a large portion of my clients are eating too little when they come to see me. Um, and you can't really outsmart your body. You may eat more later in the evening. You may eat more at a certain time, maybe on the weekends. So it's it's not something that we can be good all week and then have a cheat day. That doesn't really isn't really how our body is set up. Okay, so another diet myth, carbs are bad. Oh yes. Yeah. So I get so many questions, you know, coming right in right in the door sitting down talk about carbs. Um, I work with a lot of diabetics and even more so carbs are bad. Carbs cause my disease. So I think the important thing is to realize what carbs do for you. Um, if we limit our carbs so much to the point where we're eating very few, um, we can feel that lack of energy. Our brain runs on carbohydrates. So without those carbohydrates, our brain isn't getting that fuel. So you're going to be tired. You're going to have that memory issue, the concentration. You're going to be irritable, which you and the people around you won't appreciate. Um, and it can also you know, affect that moodiness um, and then really cause hunger and cravings. So what are some good carbs that sure. we can do to kind of make us feel better about eating carbs? Sure. So I think it's all about the appropriate portion of the carbs. So there are definitely carbs that have more fiber in them. Fiber helps us to feel fuller longer. So in, in a way, you can eat less of those and feel just as satisfied. So the whole grains, you know, there's a big push for whole grains and the reason is that fiber. So whole wheat bread, brown rice, quinoa, um, sweet potatoes are another great um, great nutritional carbohydrate. Um, not to say that white potatoes can't fit into a diet either. Um, it's all about the amount. And Americans tend to overeat those carbohydrates. So it's bringing those portions down. So what about this, this gluten-free mm -hmm. craze that seems to be sweeping the country? What is it about that? Are people using that as a way to lose weight, trying to cut out gluten, thinking that's the, the cure-all? Sure, sure. So gluten definitely has gained some popularity, um, and it really is a treatment for a disease state. So celiac disease, you can't have gluten. Um, so that is very important for someone that is tested and they have that, that celiac disease or a gluten intolerance that's been um, tested for. So if you cut gluten out of your diet and then get tested, it's not going to work. So you really have to get tested first. Um, otherwise, there really is no research linking that to weight loss. Um, in the beginning, I think a lot of it was that if you're gluten free, you can't eat at a lot of places. So you're cooking at home more, you're bringing snacks, you're increasing your fruits and your vegetables because those don't have gluten. So it's much easier to eat those. Um, so I think it's kind of like a side effect of that. But now there's gluten-free cookies and gluten-free this and gluten-free that, all these convenience foods again. So 
you know, it's, it's kind of losing some of that popularity for weight loss, I think. How can a dietitian help you to stay healthy? Sure. So what a dietitian does is they really can take a look at your lifestyle. So if you're not eating breakfast or you can't pack your lunch or dinner is very difficult, we can really focus in on those key points that are really difficult for you and kind of help to support you um, to find a way to make that work. Um, we can also take a look at any disease states, family history, diabetes, cholesterol. Whenever you look something up online, it can't be individualized. Legally, they can't do that. So everything is broad. So a broad plan doesn't work for everybody. You know, six meals a day, that's great, but maybe that doesn't work for you. Um, so we can really focus in on when you're feeling hungry, when you're feeling full. What does hunger even feel like? And how much is an appropriate portion for you? How many carbs should you have? How much protein should you have as opposed to the general recommendations? So if you had to sum things up and just kind of leave our audience with some, mm -hmm. some healthy tips to get us through these summer months, what would you suggest, like your, your best advice? Yeah, so I think the time of summer, especially for the kids, is that it's not as structured. So they're not maybe having their breakfast, their lunch, their dinner. They may be grazing all day, parents may be at work, so they may be eating some of these snack foods. So I think it's really important to encourage your kids to continue to have breakfast. If you can, having that as a family, sitting down at the table, having that balanced meal, really starting off their day just as you may during the school year, making sure that there's lunch. Um, I think another big thing is that our society is so hustle and bustle that working and eating always kind of coincide. So really kind of taking the focus off of the work for maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, eating your lunch without that, that interruption, that distraction. Um, I think the other big thing is the balance of the plate, making sure that you have the protein, the carbohydrates, the vegetables, because all of those foods work together to keep us feeling satisfied, to keep us feeling well, to give us our energy. Um, so it's not like we can take one of those pieces out and feel okay. We really need that whole combination. So working with my plate, which is um, from myplate.gov, you can find that my plate graphic, mm -hmm. put it on your fridge, help your kids out, you know, help to plan those meals. I think it's a really great tool. And then with it being so nice outside, this is the perfect time to sneak in a little extra family exercise yes. together, walks and things like that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I think the biggest help is that it's lighter, longer. So you have more time after work to be outside and to really increase that activity. Um, the, the simplest technology, a pedometer, something as, as easy as counting your steps throughout the day. I've seen a lot of clients really, you know, they're parking farther away. They're taking the stairs so that that pedometer can get higher and higher. Um, so we're shooting for 10,000 steps in a day. That's about five miles. So that's a, that's a good chunk. Um, so I think that's a really good tool. You can get it on your phone as an app um, or simple as, you know, playing catch with your son or um, with your daughter and just really increasing that time that you're outside moving and limit that screen time, watching TV, tablet, computer, phone. There's so many screens that we're watching these days. Mm -hmm. Well, this has all been really excellent advice. Dana, thank you so much sure, for being with us. Thank you for having me. We appreciate it. And if you would like to get more information about nutrition, dietitians, and just staying healthy for the summer, I want to pass along a couple of websites for you. www.rbitzer.com. That's RebeccaBitzer.com. That's where Dana works with the other dietitians in that group. Also, check out their Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash Rebel Diets. Also, you can give them a call, 301-474-2499. Thank you once again. Thank you. Well, that does it for this edition of Laurel Community Spotlight. I'm Audrey Barnes. Have a great, safe, and healthy summer.